so we have a lot of interest in terms of the trends and things that are happening in the music industry. Right. And so the first thing I'd love to hear about is how is the nature of music distribution changing? Well, that's the big thing. I mean, in the in the old days, you had to be signed to a big record label, and they would produce millions of copies and manufacture your records and put them in trucks and ship them to the stores, and they would physically be distributed. Well, nowadays, everything's pretty digital, and so your song gets out on the internet and it goes kind of viral, so the, uh, the actual manufacturing of hard copies of the records is not as many anymore, you, you know, CDs and stuff. They, they make them, but not like they used to make millions and millions of them. So a lot of the distribution is digital, and so it, in a way it kind of evens the playing field for some artists who don't have the big record label, and you know, you don't really need that anymore. A lot of people can make things in a studio like this, in your house. Mm -hmm. I did my solo record in my house, and uh, you know, we sell hard copies of it, but also it just goes out on the internet, and it's a, it's kind of great that way. I, I just somebody sent me a link the other day to free downloads of my record. I'm going, really? <laughs> or in Russia, they have it for like a penny a song. You know, it's, it's, once it just gets out there, it sort of it sort of gets away from you. But that, I think it's great because people hear your music right. all over the right. world, and so in a way, I mean, the commerce of it has really, really changed. But I, I think it's never been more fertile ground for new artists to come up. You don't need a big $100,000 budget to make a decent record anymore. You can do it in your house for $10,000 or whatever and, you know, have, have your product in the marketplace and something catches on, it catches on. Right, right. Well, and do you think that's going to affect the music that's made? The type of music that's made? Boy, that's hard to say if it would affect the type of music that's made. I mean, it, with any kind of art, I mean, the majority of stuff is just okay, but there's always that 5% that's just right. the greatest stuff. And I don't think that's going to change. I think uh, great artists make art for art's sake. And I know that I personally, when I'm making music, I'm not thinking about if this is going to sell or what are people going right. to think about it. I'm just trying to please myself and do what I consider good work, work that I can be proud of. Right. So I think that's, that's healthy. Um, I think it'd be kind of hard to be a brand new artist right now because you're really starting with so many artists and so many records coming out that people are making themselves. But still, the cream rises to the top, you know. And I think uh, hopefully, I don't think the commerce really affects the music that much. Right. And how about how it's marketed? Well, that's again, you know, a seismic shift in how things are marketed. It used to be you would take big ads, you'd even have, Harden used to have uh, ads on Saturday Night Live on TV, if you were, had a big enough budget you would have TV spots, That you don't see that much anymore. You know, a lot of bands um, they have their own websites, they have Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, all that, and they, they, uh, you know, they sell the CDs at their gigs or through the mail, so the whole marketing thing is completely different now too. It's just such a radical change, and, and it's going to happen to other, other businesses. You know, the movie business is dealing with the whole thing, too, where, you know, kids get the movie, and it's out before it comes out. Right. So uh, there's a little bit of that. And you, I think now, when I'm finishing a project and I'm mixing, I have to be a little bit more secretive about it. I can't send it to all my friends. What do you think? What do you, how do you like this? Because it'll, right. it'll get out. Somebody will post it, and then, and then it's... Because <laughs> you want to have it where they can only get it from you for the first little bit, anyway. Right. Because it gets out eventually. Well, now, speaking of that, um, how, are, how are things evolving in terms of digital rights? Yeah, that's... Protecting your music once it gets well, out Well, yeah, see, the copyright law for music was written in 1927, so it probably needs a tune-up by now, because things are pretty different from Vodio Do, 23 Skidoo, and the music right. they had back then. So, yeah, I think, I think you're going to hopefully someday see... Um, performance royalties not just for the writer but for the artist as well that's one way that that, that law has always been archaic you know if you get your song played on the radio the writer gets paid for that but the band is not really yeah and it's uh there are performance royalties that go to the writers and the publishers only and so that should change it should be the artist as well mm -hmm. like that would be one thing that they could fix right away that would be more fair because a lot of people are great players and didn't happen to write the song and then don't get paid for all the airplay. Yeah. So. Now, one thing that we're hearing is that concerts and those performances are becoming more important than the content or the song itself, that the song has become something of a brochure 
for the band and that the real money is made in the concerts and the merchandising and things well, like that. Is that's that true? absolutely true because nowadays most of the people that are listening to your record didn't pay anything for it. They got it somewhere. You know, some people do, but a lot of people don't. And so the revenues from you know selling a million records is way different from what it, what it used to be. And people don't sell, you know, Hart had one record sold 7 million copies. You do that today, people go, oh my God, 7 million copies, because nobody does that kind of numbers anymore. So, for most bands, touring is really where they make the money. So the record, they give the music away for free on the record over the internet, and but that garners them fans and a fan base. And enough people like the record, when you go to that town, people are going to show up to your gig. And that's where a lot of bands are making their money pretty much strictly through through live, you know. When I was in Hart, we we had live royalties and, and record royalties, and it was pretty pretty even. But now I guess uh, record royalty thing is much much diminished. So a lot of bands make the bulk of their money on the, on the stage. Now there's an interesting trend in terms of pricing that's out there right now in the music industry, and they cut, the technical term is market operating price. But it's basically where your fans pay what they feel like paying mm -hmm. for a song, uh, for you know <laughs> merchandise, right? So they they set the price. Each individual fan, yeah. you know, comes. I think that's a beautiful notion. But what other business? I mean, if you said that to GM, I would pay whatever I feel like for this car. What do you think? That, that wouldn't work. I think it's kind of an odd notion, but I think it comes from the desperation of well, if we don't let them pay what they want, they're just not going to pay anything at all. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and in a way, it's kind of cool because people go, oh, I can't wait to get this record, and you pay whatever it is, and other people go, well, I yeah, just want to check it out. So, but I think, I think it's, a, it's an unusual idea. It's a kind of a cool notion, but I can't think of that working in too many other businesses. Have, have you been tempted to try it with your latest work? I haven't tried that, but I sure, I definitely would. Mm -hmm. I, I just figure, you know, that the people that get it from me want the real CD with the which sounds better than an MP3. You know, if you mm -hmm. want to hear the, the work the way I intend you to hear it, with the cover and all that, they get that directly from me. Um, in America, I have all the rights to my own work, which is great. And for the international stuff, I'm with a label in Italy, and they distribute it all over the world for me. So they take care of all the international. But here in the States, I'm my own label. I have no one to answer to, which is f fantastic as, as an artist to be able to right. do whatever you like. I mean, I did the cover, I did the, everything. You know, right. that's... that's it's a fun way to express yourself. Are more artists going that route? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have their own little labels or are on a smaller label. I think smaller labels are really coming back you know, because the giants are sort of, they're, they're too lumbering, they're too big, right. you know, and so they're sort of falling under their own their own weight. So it's, everybody has their own little labels. I, I think it's healthy. You know, it's a little bit tricky and it's a little bit more work, but but it's great when you completely control your work and you don't have to right. ask anybody, well, what should, we, what should be the single? Or, you know, what do, right. You know, you, don't, you can do what you like. You decide. So that's good, yeah. I think that's nice. I like that. That's excellent. Well, that's, that's all I have. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Nice speaking with you. Wonderful. Enjoy the rest of the party.